Did you know that the FX trading market or the Forex market is the largest financial market in the world? There are over 6 trillion foreign exchange trades that happen daily. The FX market is larger than the stock market, the options market, the commodities market. The FX market runs 24 hours a day, five days a week. In today's video, I'm gonna give you a high level overview of FX trading. This is the FX trading cheat sheet. Hey guys, my name is Emeka. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to the FX trading cheat sheet. So I told you what FX trading is, buying and selling currencies for the purpose of making profit. You usually buy one currency against the other, and these are called currency pairs. So like the euro against the dollar or the dollar against the yen. The major currency pairs that are traded are the euro dollar, the dollar yen, Aussie dollar, Kiwi dollar, New Zealand dollar, and sterling dollar. The sterling dollar is also known as cable. It got its nickname from the cable that runs under the Atlantic Ocean that was used to transmit information about the exchange rate from the US dollar to the British pound. So now you know the sterling dollar is also known as cable. You want to sound like a trader? The next time, instead of saying sterling dollar, just say cable. Traders know what I'm talking about. Now, one thing you'll notice about these major pairs I gave you is that they're all currencies against the dollar. Now, we also have what they call cross-currency pairs, and these are just currency pairs that do not include the US dollar. Popular ones, Euro sterling, Euro yen, sterling yen. So, there are a number of different key factors that affect foreign exchange rates. I would say the number one key factor are interest rates. Interest rates are a major driver for foreign exchange rates, right? If the interest rates in a country increases, then that country will attract more investment because more people will want to put money in that country in order to generate a higher interest. As a result, the exchange rate for that country will go up. Another key factor that affects foreign exchange rates is inflation, right? Inflation means it costs a lot more money to buy something currently than it used to in the past, right? That's inflation. And as inflation goes up, then the buying power of that currency erodes and goes down. So inflation is another key factor that you have to pay attention to. Another key factor that affects foreign exchange rate is economic growth. Things like GDP, gross domestic product. If a country is doing well, indicators like gross domestic product will show that this is a country that is doing well. Same thing as with interest rates, more investments come in will affect the exchange rate, causing it to go up. Political stability, very important one. Places that are politically stable tend to attract foreign investments and that affects the foreign exchange rate causing it to go up. And finally, I would say investor sentiment. Investor sentiment can drive exchange rates up or down. It really, at the end of the day, trading is really a matter of if there's more buyers than sellers, the price will go up. If there's more sellers than buyers, the price will come down. So if, so if investors are bullish on a specific market, the price will go up. If they're bearish on a specific market, the prices will go down. Now, I told you about the major currency pairs like Euro dollar, dollar yen. I told you about the cross currency pairs like Euro sterling, sterling yen. But there's also currency pairs that we refer to as exotics. And exotics are usually uh, pairs between a major currency and a lesser known currency. So now that I've given you an overview of the FX trading market, let's talk about the trading aspect of things. These are the types of FX trading you need to be aware of. First one is spot trading. Spot trading is the immediate exchange of currencies at the current market rate. So spot trading would be if you go onto a trading platform, make a trade at the rate you see at that time, that's spot trading. We have forward contracts, which are the exchange of currency at a future date. A lot of farmers use forward contracts in order to manage risk and uh, sort of establish a stable income. Right? Because you know it takes you a long time to grow your crops and you don't know whether the exchange rate today will be the same as five months in the future when you're harvesting your crops. So a lot of farmers use forward contracts. And the third one I want to talk about is options. The option give the trader the right, but not the obligation, 
to exchange currencies at a specific price before a specific date. So when you buy an option, let's say you buy a Euro dollar option, you will be able to execute on that option before a deliverable date. Those are the three forms of FX trading you need in your cheat sheet. Okay, let's go on to market risk. The major risk you have to understand is there's market risk. The market risk is how your profitability will be affected by the movements in the market prices. So, like I told you before, you buy something at a specific price, the price falls down, price goes up. There's a risk involved with that. That's known as market risk. There's another kind of risk known as leverage risk, and this happens when you borrow money and use that to trade. So not only are you risking the money you've borrowed, but there's also the market risk on top of that. That's the leverage risk, right? It's a lot more scarier to trade on leverage. So don't try that at home, kids. Another one is liquidity risk. That's where it's harder to get in and get out of the trade whenever you want to. Now, FX trading is probably one of the most liquid markets out there. I would say there's higher liquidity risk in other assets. Like, for example, if you bought a home, there's high liquidity risk there. It's not that easy to sell or buy a home. So now that you know about types of trading and the risk involved, what about risk management? How do you still trade understanding that there's a lot of these risks involved? Well, you should employ risk management techniques. And within FX trading, there's different kinds of orders that can allow you to do that. One of them is a stop loss order. And what that means is you put in an order at a specific price under the price at which you bought it. And if the price falls to that price, you'll be taken out of the trade. So you don't have to be sitting at the platform, looking at the screen all day, uh, waiting to exit. You just put in a stop loss order in there to take you out of the trade. I'll make another video specifically to focus on techniques for uh, managing your risk to reward ratio. So now that you've gotten the overview of the foreign exchange market, how do you start trading? There is a number of trading platforms that are out there Forex brokers that you can use to start trading. I'll put some in the description below. Before you go off and start trading, let me read this one disclaimer for you because it's very important for you to understand that trading is risky. All right, so here we go. Trading for an exchange or any other financial instrument involves a high degree of risk and can result in a loss of your entire investment. It's important to understand that Forex trading is not suitable for all investors, and you should consider your financial situation, investment experience, and risk tolerance before deciding to trade. Okay? So, trading, just like when I talk about Bitcoin and everything else, understand where you are in life. Understand whether you can handle the risks. And I'm going to do a video about risk to reward ratio to make sure you understand that, you know, it's not a get-rich-quick scheme. You could make a lot of money. You could lose a lot of money. So that has been the FX Trading Cheat Sheet. Thanks for watching. Please remember to hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the video and what else you want to hear about. And I'll see you next time.